Dear reviewer, good evening, and welcome to current issue with me tonight, uh, Larry Rocco. And Larry Rocco is a person very well known in Michigan and Macomb County. He's the treasurer, yeah. and, and, and he has been involved with the community for so long, not just the Italian community, but for sure the Middle Eastern community and other ethnic minorities. Rocco, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to start with you and, 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 and talk to me about the Italian community. Sure. When, when, did you, when did you came to, 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 to America? And, and, all, and what's the, the generation after that? Why they came to America? Okay, sure. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you, Wally, for having me here because it's always an honor and a pleasure to be in the presence of such a, a great gentleman as yourself. Thank you I've so known much. You for a few years now. Yes. And, and it's always great to be here with you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, in regard to uh, a little background on me and the Italian community, <coughs> uh, my mother and father were born in Detroit in the early yes. 1900s. Uh -huh. So, but their parents, my, my father's parents came from northern Italy, Lombardia, the yes. northern region, and my mother's parents came from the southern region. Uh, Reggio Calabria, as my grandfather was born. So they okay. came as, as young kids in the late 1800s. Mm -hmm. And then they got, they met here in Detroit, my grandmother and grandfather, and they, they had a family of 12 kids. Wow. One of them being my mother, thank God. Yeah, it's, it's most of the Italian, they came to Detroit when, you know, the first generation, we're talking yes. in 1900. They came to Detroit or New York or California. Yes. Which, which area they came? They came in through Ellis Island, uh, yeah. New York. New York. But where they stay? And well, that's a good question yeah. you're asking me. What happened originally, some of the family stayed in New York. Okay. But uh, there was jobs in Detroit for the automotive. Yes. At that time, and that's why a lot of them gravitated to Detroit and Detroit, they made Detroit their home, so. I see. Same with the Middle Eastern community. They right. came because of the auto factories here and worked right. for, for, for Fort first, and sure. then, you know, family gathering and all that, and they grew up here. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. What's the population, you think, approximately in Michigan? And, and I know most of the Italian, they live in Macomb County. So if you could give me some yeah, idea have, about this. The population in Michigan is around 11% of, uh, say, n uh, 9 million people, almost 10 million people here in Michigan. Yes. So 11 uh, percent is uh, a good percentage of that population. We have a high percentage of them in Macomb County, but we also have many in Detroit, Wayne County, County and also Oakland County. Yeah. So, and so it's about like a million? I'd say or less close than to seven, eight hundred thousand. Close, close to yeah. a, mil a million, all, okay. all totaled, mm -hmm. sure. And uh, they're very influential, and they marry within the communities as Americans. We marry the Chaldeans, we marry the Polish, yes. we marry the Germans. So there's a lot of Americanization going on Absolutely. in uh, all the counties because we become friends, we speak good English, and, and we get together, and, and, it, and it's, it's great to be that way. Great. Uh, as an Italian, uh, you know, Michigan and, and the nation is multinational of yes, many it is. ethnic minorities. Is the Italian work with other minorities? We're talking about Michigan now. Yes. Other minorities like, you know, the, the, the Latino, the Asian, the Middle Eastern. Yes. They work with them all. They're, yeah. We, we uh, America, uh, the Italians uh, are kind of like the Chaldeans. They yeah. like people. They like to be with people. They're yes. family oriented. Uh -huh. They love mom and dad, grandpa and grandpa, grandma and they like to get together, and they like families that are, are like that. So they like to be friends with all, and we, we enjoy with the Germans, the Polish, the Chaldeans, the Middle Easterns of all different regions, and the Asians. We have some Asian friends, sure. and uh, we get along with all of them. Now, talk to me about Macomb County. Macomb County, uh, I think it's a good hub for the Middle Eastern community. I believe there is about uh, close to 170 to 180,000 Middle Eastern community sure. in, in Macomb County. That's absolutely true. We have a large uh, Middle Eastern community in Macomb County, and they're very uh, strong, very progressive, and, and very knowledgeable in a lot of businesses. Yes. They're also in uh, Wayne County and Oakland County. <coughs> mm -hmm. But I think the larger percentage is Macomb County, and 
we're happy to have them there because they're great people, they're good voters. Sure. And uh, they take pride in their community as well as uh, the information that takes place on a daily basis. And we'll honestly, with today them. they are involved in every aspect of the life. You know, and it's in business and social and in, in, in economies, you know, they are involved, you know. Yes. Uh, back about five, seven, ten years ago, they weren't like today. Today they are very involved. Yes. Yeah. They have been organizing over the years <clears throat> and becoming more and more community organized. And they work with all the different uh, nationalities and groups that are in, in the country, including the African Americans the uh, Asians, the Chaldeans, yes. the, um, you know, all the different, uh, and the different religions that, uh, that exist yeah. in Macomb County. Yeah. So we yeah. work with everybody. Yeah. And we, do, we are diversified in our involvement we are. in business. <coughs> you know, in the Middle Eastern community, usually they, they are involved in business. And we were <coughs> at one time, the, the party store, the gas station. Yes. Today, thanks God, Big majority of them are involved in many different sure. businesses. Lawyers, doctors. Yes. Oh, yeah. And they're uh, all, all involved sure. in that, and that's, we're great. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I would tell you, though, America is a diversified country. Yes. And it's the only country in the world that you can come to and you can become an American. Yes. You can't go to France and become a Frenchman. You can't go to Italy and <laughs> become an Italian. Yeah, but you can come to America and you can become an American. And that's what's so great about the and USA. they give you the opportunity. They give the you opportunity plenty of opportunities. And, you know, uh, <coughs> so it's, it's, it's when they say it's land of opportunity, it yes. is, believe me. It really is. Yes. And it's if you don't work at it, it, all you have to do is work. That's really the basic of it all. Yes. We've slowed down a little bit now with this COVID yes. situation. It's impacted on everyone. But there's plenty of work out there for people that want to work. And most Americans are hardworking people, and they are, they're ready, willing, and able to work. So, Great. Tell me, Larry, how you start your political, you know. How we started start, in the political? You know, okay, yes. How you involve and, you know, you grow okay. and, you know. I've always been involved in American history, studied it in school, graduated from Oakland University with a major. That's what I graduated from. Okay, so we're <laughs> colleagues. Yes. Again, Oakland University, I, and I studied uh, political science history. That's what I did. Too. And uh, business management, so uh -huh. worked them all. But the point was, is I've always been interested in history, even in high school. I see. So that gives you an interest in politics, because when you study the early presidents, uh, that kind of gets you involved. and and. Through that, when I got out of the Navy, I was in the Navy during the Vietnam War. I see. And when I got out of the Navy, I immediately had to uh, get a job, and I got into the real estate business. I was a real estate salesman for something like 45, 50 years wow. yeah. in the real estate industry, and mm -hmm. I did real well. And during that time, I'm running across all these different elected officials, politicals, and I'm thinking, you know, these guys are pretty sharp, but I think I can do some of that work that they're doing. And so I did get interest, and I ran a few few different times. Finally, yes. I became successful, but I was active with the uh, the Republican Party I see. over yeah. the years. And mm -hmm. uh, I learned to uh, get myself involved with a lot of the people that are involved in politics and, and to, to work at running for office and getting elected. And yeah. And now we got <coughs> re-elected for the second term. I did as yes. as as uh, Macomb County Treasurer. Yes. Tell me what Macomb County Treasurer. What your daily activities you you do at Macomb County? Okay. Treasurer? Well, well, the county is run pretty pretty effectively. We have a county exec. Mm -hmm. We have uh, the county commissioners yes. who are our legislature, and we are the. Uh, the treasurer's office. We maintain all the money and watch the finance. Well, there's a finance department that spends the money predicated on what the county commissioners approve based upon what the county executive presents. And then it's kind of like legislat legislation in Lansing and legislation in uh, Washington, D.C. Okay. First, Quite similar. We have to pay the taxes to the city, <coughs> right? Yes. Okay. How, when Macomb County going to involve with collecting the taxes? Well, the, the taxes come to Macomb County when they don't pay them on time in the city, when they, they become expired after uh, a certain period, then they have to come to the county. Then the county is required to collect all those taxes. Now, what happens in these slow periods right now, mm -hmm. 
we realize, and we even we do it when it's not slow periods, there's always different things, but we put people on payment plans. I see. Because we don't want to foreclose. There's a three-year period. And especially that house <coughs> is, is the, the sure. living there. It's the most important thing. Absolutely. For them, you know? And we know yeah. that we all get into slow times. Yes, especially we, in COVID time. Yes, you know, which this is happening. A lot of people lost their jobs <coughs> and, you know. Some people yes. lose their jobs. There's all various yeah. medical, uh -huh. all kinds of reasons why people get behind. Sure. So we don't want to foreclose on you. We want you to stay in your home. Our motto is keep Macomb your home. That's so, excellent, excellent yes. model, honestly. We do, you know, so yes. we give people a great opportunity. Yes. Whatever you can afford on a monthly payment on your property taxes until you get back on your feet we put you on that payment plan and we help you as much as we can to keep you in your home. Gives you an opportunity to at least uh, put your home on the market if you want to sell it. If you feel you can't get out of it, you can, yes. you can save your credit or you can also get another job, get a job or something comes up where you might get uh, more, more help and get back on your feet. So that's, that's the whole purpose of all of that. Okay. If I am, if I live in a Sterling High or Warren, any city in Macomb, second year, first year I, I couldn't pay, second year I'll go to Macomb. Yes. Okay. Are you contact those people? How do you reach them to tell them that I, we have uh, a, uh, a plan that you could pay, you know, a little bit sure. at the time and all that? What we do is, we've been doing since I've been there, is we have uh, just prior to the time where they have to come in and pay the property taxes 30 okay. days before. We go on radio and we go on television. Good. We have a couple of different programs, and we're certainly going to be come to come into your station to Thank do you. more of it. And we are ready for that. Honestly. I know you are. The you service you give to the community, sure. honestly, it's worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So we want them to come out, and we do tell them, look, don't worry if you're behind or things of that nature. We understand we're going through some slow times, so come on into the office. Let us know what your concerns are and we will help you, we'll put you on a payment plan to keep you in your home. That's okay. what Macomb Tell County Treasurer does. Tell me more about that does. payment plan. If it's somebody owe $3,000, <coughs> okay? Okay. How are we gonna work with him? Here's how it works. If you owe $3,000, we try to put you on a payment plan that okay. you, can, you can handle effectively. And it's good for- A payment for a year? A year for sure. Okay. And then hopefully you can get caught up and then if you need more time, we'll give you more time, but we try to put you on a payment plan that you can handle, whether it's $100 a month or uh, $300 a month, something within the re reasonable amount that could put you in a, in a position where you might be able to pay those taxes off over a period of time. Okay, if, if somebody uh, cannot pay a lot and 3,000, is there a penalty and interest or those at 3,000? Because if there is, he's going to be hard sure. for him to catch up. That's a great question you're asking me. Unfortunately, we have no control over the penalty and interest. That is a state law, and it's controlled by the state. They mandate that we do that. So we understand the burden that it puts on people. So what we do is we make the payment plan reasonable, okay. and we tell them, hey, look, at the sooner you pay it off, the better off you'll be for sure and you'll get back on your feet sooner. So we understand that's a concern for a lot of people, that penalty and interest, but yes. we have no control of waiving it. If we could, we probably would contribute to that, but it's a state law and we're, we're required to abide by those state I laws. See. So if he doesn't pay, <coughs> you send him a notice and all that, and he doesn't pay and he's behind two, probably three years, four years, what do you do? Well, generally, we give them a lot of opportunity up okay. to three years, and if as long as they're cooperating, we'll work with them. But it's it's only when they don't cooperate at all where we're we're forced to foreclose. Unfortunately, we sure don't want to do that. But on rare occasion, it happens, and that's what we we have to do at that point. The closure. I have a question. Yes. If somebody renting, a renting a house, and the landlord he's not paying taxes. How are you going to afford a closure? Where this family is going to go? Yeah, that makes it difficult. He's a renter. He's paying yeah. the rent. But the landlord is not paying the taxes. Well, that, that's a cause for concern. Well, they have to come into our office and let us know what's going on. Okay. And then we have to try to get both the renter and, and the landlord 
uh, to get into some kind of a situation where we can help. And we'll do that. So right now, yeah. uh, we don't have that officially, but if we do, we're willing to help them out a in any way that we can. Okay. But right now, the, the, the federal government, you know, they they telling the people, if you cannot pay the rent, don't pay. Yes, they are. And, that and, is what they are the saying. And the court is not doing nothing to them now. That's correct. And they're going to fall behind. They're going to fall behind, uh, you know, uh, a month, two, probably a whole year. What's going to happen now? Makes it difficult for the landowner, for the, for the property owner, because he is required to pay those taxes. Yes. And that's why we're <clears throat> more than willing to uh, put them on a payment plan based upon those circumstances. We'll make special accommodations if necessary, uh, but we have to do everything within the guidelines of state law. Yes. That's where we're controlled by that. Okay. If they don't pay and all that, and, and what, after winning a foreclosure... What do you do with, the, with those houses? Well, we, we put them up for the first time. We put them up for bid for people that want to buy them. Okay. And we put the notice on in the paper. And uh, we see what happens the first time. And then the second time, we open it up to private or special investors that may want to come in and make okay. an offers on these properties. Are you going to do like auction? We do do an auction. That's the last one that we the do. The last one. Oh. Yeah, the okay. last one is the auction where we go three times. And then finally the auction takes place and we go from there. Uh, we auction off whatever is available. But and since we've had COVID, uh -huh. we have kind we'll of reduced. stop everything. Pretty much. Good. good Pretty much. Yeah. We're slowing everything down yes. for that reason. Okay. I know the city, they depend on you collecting taxes so you could pay for the service. Yes. The city. If, they, if you are behind in collecting taxes, especially in this time COVID, What's going to happen to the service for the cities, you know, for Macomb County, you know, in general? Sure. Well, you know, they all have their concerns regarding the taxes that come in that help to pay their bills. So they have to, you know, lower their their uh, their payments, things of, of that nature, yeah. and their, their cost as much as they can so that they can survive which yeah. is what we all have to do. Well, l let's put it, you know, before that. Mac the treasurer collect the taxes from the people. Yes. Okay. And then the treasurer, what they do with this money? The money is, is you, the money that we collect? Yes. Uh, well, we, we pay the, uh, on investments that we have. Okay. On some of that money, we have investments that we invest for the county to keep the taxes low. Exactly, yeah. And things of that nature. And uh, we, we pay certain uh, Do you county, pay like for the bills. service for the road or for, you know, sure. uh, education and all that? That's all comes out of the uh, county commissioners when they do the budget. I see. We do a budget annually. But you collect the money of the taxes and they are deciding where that money goes. Yes. Yes. That's okay. done with the county commissioners and the county exec. We all work together, and everybody, every office and department in Macomb County has a budget. So we have to work within the guidelines of the budget. And in some of that budget information, we have road money for the roads and things of that nature. It's yeah. all included in uh, the tax base. I see. The Middle Eastern community who live in Macomb County, you know, they are just like the other ethnic minority. Yes, they are. When it hit them, it hit them, and sometimes they cannot afford to pay the taxes and all that. Are you reaching those people? Because we have that mentality of getting the mail and throwing the garbage, and, and especially when it's a big sure. bill. And, 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 and doing that, you are feeling behind. Your okay. point's well taken. Are you reaching to them to explain you are very serious about it? And if we are in COVID now, COVID you know, is going to go, and after that, we need to collect the taxes, and if you are more behind, you're going to be sure. with big numbers. This is true. Yes. <clears throat> well, here's what's going on. We do mail. That's standard. We're required by mail. Okay. And we also do the advertisements to try to reach everybody yes. to television and radio. And we let them know that, look, if you're behind, don't be too concerned. We'll work with you. We'll put you on a payment plan. We want you to stay in Macomb, keep Macomb your home. We want to get you back on your feet. I see. It's what it's all about. So, mm -hmm. And because of COVID, 
but even before COVID, we were doing this, but with COVID in, in place now, uh, we do it even more so because it's, it's absolutely essential. Yeah, that we honestly, help I did interview with you even before COVID, and, and, and your idea is we wanna keep the people at home. Yes. This is their, 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 the cover in there for the family. That's you correct. Know, and we need that, you know. Do you handle residential and commercial? Yes. So, for example, buildings, if he is behind in paying taxes, let's say a store behind taxes, what do you do with them? What, uh, I didn't quite hear what you said. A building, commercial building, okay. and he's behind, you know, in, in taxes. Well, we can't do uh, property uh, payment plans with commercial, generally speaking. Uh, sometimes we can make some exceptions, but basically the payment plans go for residential. I see. Predominantly. Yeah. And that's that's how we do that. But we try to help everybody out and give so, them as know, much information as we this possibly time, can. You know, sure. There's a lot of, for example, restaurant. He owned the building, sure. he owned the business. What? No business. We understand he's, the circumstances today. How he's gonna pay today. the taxes, you know? Yeah, yeah, it makes it difficult. So we just have to work with people and, and help them out as much as we can and we will. Great, great. So that's and, what that's and about. And what do you want from the Middle Eastern community? You know, there is, you are one of the, yes, we have the executive and, and, and we have the clerk and the treasurer and, and you know. Prosecuting and attorney. Huh? And the prosecuting Prosecutor attorney. attorney. Yeah, a good guy now. <laughs> yes, we got, we got Peter in there. Yeah. How you deal with, you know, what do you want the Middle Eastern to, to do more? To, you know, you look at them and you've been, for history with them yes. and see them growing, uh, especially by numbers. You know, in the past five years, uh, the numbers is more than triple in Macomb County. I can How tell you, you that? what I know about them is they're all hard workers and they all work to achieve success in their families and in the county. And, and I work with them very effectively. Anything I can do to help them, I'm ready, willing, and able to do. Yes. And uh, it's, it's very comfortable. I know a lot of, I have a lot of Chaldean families that I know personally. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, you know, they're great workers. They have great businesses and they, they're good people. They, they're good Americans. Yes. And we love them. And honestly, there is a there is combination, especially the, 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 the Chaldean, the Greek, and the Italian. Sure. Almost same food. Almost same culture, family value. Quite similar. We keep Quite similar. everything under the, the roof. You the know. Italians think they make the best food, but you know, there's probably <laughs> strong competition there. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know that mm -hmm. goes. Well, but Barry, thank you so much for coming here. Well, it's an honor and a yeah. pleasure to be here with you, Wally, because yeah. you're Honestly, one of the best. Honestly, what, what I hear about you and, and you know, the payment of plan, and, and you force your office so many times not to let the people for a closure in That's the houses correct. and all that. And that's passion, honestly. It needs yes. somebody like you with passion to do that. And we thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Wally, always an honor and a pleasure to Likewise. be here with you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay. Dear reviewer, that was my interview with Larry Raka. Raka. He is the Macomb County Treasurer. And he's given you a message that if you feel behind in taxes, all you have to do is go into their office. They'll work with you. Even more than one year or two years, they'll work with you. They understand your situation. Sure. And they want you to keep the house. They're not interested in getting the house from you and sell it and making the money and that. No, he, they want you to stay in the house. So please, do not throw that paper and it's important and telling you this is the final one that, that we need you to come and work with us and we'll put you on payment of plan. Don't throw that paper, please, no. Call them, and you're gonna see the, 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 the door is very well open, and, and they will receive you, and they'll work with you, and believe me, they have, they have uh, a treasure that with a lot of passion, and, and thanks God for that. So please do not hesitate for going to them and explaining yours. I know that there's a pride, but again, the, they're gonna receive you with a lot of pleasure, so, so please go to them and explain your situation and they will work with you. Thanks for watching and good night.